the average fitness influencer guys, they would commit a felony before they allowed a picture of themselves without abs to be put on the internet. Chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. Your home for gains and brains. And I need you guys to do me a favor and send this video to all of the SARMs goblins on TikTok and in your gym. Because today we're going to talk about why bulking and cutting, the dreaded and horrific bulking and cutting, so vilified by a lot of people in the fitness space, why bulking and cutting actually fix body dysmorphia. So what you guys remember that classic quote, Body dysmorphia, ever heard of it? How do you think it develops? Fell from bulking and cutting! So stop it! And I go with Greg Doucette more than most other people on this channel because I think he just provides so much body dysmorphic content, especially for young lifters. But he is far from the only person who says this in the fitness space. This is a pretty widespread trope. Not only do people say that bulking and cutting don't work somehow, it's like, oh, you're just gonna gain and lose the same 10 pounds every single year. It's like, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, you will. If you eat like crap and you train like crap, you're not gonna see any serious results. But beyond the fact that they think physically it doesn't have any real benefits, they will say that bulking and cutting is why people get body dysmorphia. Once again, it falls into the category of the dirty bulk fallacy, and then it swings into ab anxiety. Those two concepts I coined, they're basically on opposite ends of the spectrum. They think it's like this ping pong system of becoming a fat piece of garbage, medically overweight, obese piece of garbage, and then you're gonna somehow become this shredded, chiseled Greek statue, and you're just gonna jump back and forth from those two things. That's not how this works. And a lot of the times, too, they're going to say whenever you cut, oh my god, you're going to cut, and you're going to lose all the muscle and strength you gained in the bulked state. And it's like, you're not going to keep all of the muscle you gained, but if you train and eat intelligently, like I've been saying, you're going to keep a hefty percentage of the muscle and strength that you gained from the bulking phase as you cut down. And if you cut down excessively shredded, like for 5%, 7% peak bodybuilding condition, yeah, you're gonna lose a lot of muscle mass, especially if you're natural. That's just how it goes. But you have no need to cut down that lean, okay? Unless you're competing in bodybuilding, there's no reason to get down to those excessively low body fat percentages. I lost all my muscle cutting. Yeah, of course you did, bro. You weigh 145 pounds as a grown man. So whether the people who talk about bulking and cutting negatively take the end of, oh, well, cutting is terrible because you're gonna lose all your muscle and strength, or if they say, well, you can't stop being lean because if you don't have abs, you're fat. Whatever side of that fork you're on, either way, these people paint this fictitious reality of what bulking and cutting actually is. Maybe not fictitious, but they paint this extremely exaggerated case of bulking and cutting, and they always use these commercial gym schmucks as their examples, who train like crap and they eat like crap, they recover like crap, they do every single thing wrong, and then they say, see, bulking and cutting don't work. And it's like, no, bulking and cutting do work. You don't work. Your brain doesn't work. And I've explained in a lot of videos previously the physical reasons why bulking not only works, but is necessary. But now we're going to talk about the body dysmorphic, more mental side of things. Why bulking and cutting are actually going to fix your body dysmorphia. I can't guarantee that they're going to totally cure it, but I can tell you that they are going to help it if you can do them properly. These guys like to frame this as if you're going to just make this perfect linear progress of staying as lean as you want and getting the muscle size that you want. And it's not like it's always linear either way. Okay, things happen in life. Your diet might change for whatever reason. Family events can keep you out of the gym. You may get injured. You might be very busy with the job and you can't keep your training up where you would like it to be. There's a bunch of variables why you would not be in the peak condition that you would want to be. And beyond that, I argue this, if you are not able to be comfortable with your body at different points, at varying points, you're never going to have a fully healthy outlook in the fitness space. The fitness space, especially on social media, is body dysmorphia on a thousand at this point. It's completely insane. There are 16, 18 year olds out here who are the size of IFBB pro competitors 
Lifetime natural, of course. Everybody's a lifetime natural, even though it's obvious that they're not. But these gullible beginners don't know any better, and they're like, that's amazing. Then they're going to listen to what they say, and they're not going to get the results, and then they're going to hate themselves. And the reason that they hate themselves is simply because they have this expectation in their head that they can do it because some hustler online lied about how they did it, and then they think that they're a piece of garbage, a loser, a failure, whatever, because they couldn't achieve the same thing. And that's why I argue that you need to be comfortable with your body at varying points, and that's why bulking and cutting is so good for this process. Because you need to learn to, I don't like to say like, you know, love yourself and self-love and all this like woo-woo nonsense that fat acceptance and everything promotes, but the grain of truth there is the fact that you do need to learn to be comfortable with your body image whenever it's changing. If you're not able to be mentally okay with how you look in the mirror at higher body fats, lower body fats, higher strength, lower strength, leaner, more fluffier, if you're unable to be comfortable with yourself, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Not only that, if you do get to point B, and if you've taken illegal measures, extreme measures, whatever the case might be, if you get to point B and then you can't maintain point B, and then you lose point B, then you hit yourself again. So now I'm gonna show you guys some images of me on the screen. You guys have seen me in numerous states on this channel. You've seen me closer to 20% body fat. You've seen me closer to 10 with abs. You've seen me as a Ticonderoga pencil at 150 pounds as a beginner. You've seen me deep into a bulk at 190 pounds. You've seen me softer and fluffier. You've seen me with veins all over. The average fitness influencer guys, they would commit a felony before they allowed a picture of themselves without abs to be put on the internet. Now that doesn't make sense for business purposes, but it does not give a realistic look of how they look all the time. Unless of course you're on clen, trend, and you starve yourself year round, then maybe that is how you look all the time. Even so though, that's not healthy, no matter how these guys try to spin it, it's not sustainable without chemical assistance. And you guys cannot forget the fact too, I've talked about this recently as well, there is way more photoshopping and image manipulation happening in fitness today on social media than you realize. We tend to only notice the very obvious Photoshop jobs, but these people are very good at this stuff now. Plenty of people online, even if it's not Photoshop, the way they just manipulate the angles, the lighting, the composition of the pictures, they look huge online. You see these dudes in person with a shirt on, you can barely tell they lift. So a lot of times people will get to that lean goal they have, and then they realize like, I don't look like I lift anymore in clothing. No you don't. You got tricked by the angles, the lighting, the magic of the entire bodybuilding thing, essentially. I mean, the modern fitness aesthetic is essentially anorexia on steroids. That's not a joke. And on another end, too, I've been going at the leanness for a while here. On the heavier side of things, there's also plenty of, like, powerlifter types who think that if they drop below 25% that they can't perform. You know, you're like 25% body fat. I got a carb load before this bench press session, bro. It's like, you probably don't need to do that. Whether you're bulking or cutting, it doesn't matter ultimately what you're doing. If you cannot be comfortable with yourself, your results, just your overall outlook during both of those phases, you're not fully where you need to be in terms of mindset, in my opinion. And as you go further and further into the lifting journey, you're going to be better at both. You're going to make mistakes, you're going to improve, you're going to get better at training. But if you refuse to ever do that, if you like to think you're going to stick in this one center line for your entire life, okay, I finally got some abs, I'm going to get huge here and stay looking this way. It's not going to happen. Or if you think that you're going to keep all of the strength you did at 25% and then you get down to 12% because you want to get leaner, you can't get mad whenever your strength drops down a little bit. It's simply part of the process. Nothing else in life is this linear. Is your mood that stable all the time? Are your finances that stable all the time? Are your relationships that stable all the time? You've never lost a job. You've never gotten a raise. You've never gotten fired. You've never been happy one day, sad the other. You've never broken up with somebody, been broken up with. You see what I mean? There's so many variables in life, not just in fitness, but in life in general that we can't always control, that can kind of throw things off. Whether those variables are being manipulated by you or by things outside of your control, you cannot lose your mind over this stuff. I've gotten multiple comments from people on this channel who said that they were morbidly obese and then they finally got in the gym and adjusted their diet. They lost hundreds of pounds 
and then they became essentially anorexic right they lost so much weight so quickly they went to all these extremes they went from one extreme to the other and either way they didn't like themselves all right that's the bad end of bulking and cutting but once again that is not normal usually it's only people who are in the body dysmorphic fitness space who do that because they're like oh man i'm gonna get in the best shape of my life and get super shredded right not just lose weight and get to a healthy weight and get more energized eat better etc they want to become shredded bra they want to look like ziz bra okay and then they go through all these extremes and then it becomes the point that they cannot maintain where they got to but the take-home point here guys is that nothing in life is this linear and consistent all right you're going to have hiccups and bumps in the road no matter what stage you're at so you cannot expect yourself to always look in peak condition don't fall for these influencers who always are in peak condition too. It's a mirage on social media. If you're in this mindset now, I have other content on this channel relating to this topic too. Check it out. I know it can be a tough road to escape this body dysmorphic culture that fitness is, but you can do it or at least make your situation a bit better. So this has been the video, guys. Thank you as always for watching. Big shout out to the Patreon supporters and the channel members. Hit me up in the links down below for custom programs, online coaching, or consultations. And I will catch you guys next time.